Hey guys, my name is Andrew Perlot with Renaissance Humans, and today we're talking about a really important dieting concept, and that is getting yourself out of the corner that you've backed yourself into when you've run too large of a calorie deficit for too long. So, a lot of you guys probably remember that I've done multiple videos talking about metabolic damage or metabolic adaptation. The uh, basically what occurs, the slowdown in metabolic rate that occurs when you've been running a calorie deficit for a long time, particular, particularly uh, large calorie deficits. And when you back yourself into the corner like that, what happens is, yeah, you've gained, you've lost weight, which is great, but your metabolic rate has declined so much that you can't really go back to a reasonable amount of food intake. Usually the people that end up in this position aren't people who are like, oh, you know, they're, they're massively obese and have been overeating and now they run a reasonable calorie deficit and start exercising and they don't get there right away. It's what happens when you have multiple cycles of uh, dieting, like, you know, you run a big calorie deficit and then, oh, I'm going to splurge and overeat for a while because I've been good. And then oh, I'm fat again and I better, I better bring it down. And over those multiple sessions, your metabolic rate will drop. Now, the thing that I've been talking about for so long is this is really uh, a, a concern that is overblown. Because as I've discussed in my um, uh, videos about the Minnesota starvation experiment and other videos about metabolic um, adaptation, it's a transient state. And it goes away when you start to eat a weight maintenance level of calories. The problem is that people usually don't get it enough, give it enough time for that to occur. And so they end up uh, forever with this suppressed rate. And then they, they try to eat a little more and they're like, oh crap, I gained, a, 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 I cr I gained multiple pounds over this like week of eating normal amount of calories. Uh, my 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 metabolism is shot. I can't do this. I better go back to restricting again. And then they just compound their problems over and over and over again. So uh, today I want to talk about a coaching client that I had. Um, she asked that I not use her name or her pictures because she uh, doesn't want to be known as <laughs> this person, but uh, she gave me permission to talk about it and I'm going to do that. But first, let's look at uh, how much of a dip in metabolic rate can we expect for people who restrict their calories. This is an older study from around 1995 and it was one of the first to tackle uh, what had been kind of an issue of contention in science for a long time, and that was it was easy to get people to lose weight, but why is it that after about a week or two on a calorie-restricted diet, people don't lose as much weight as the models predict they should, and afterwards, when they stop running a calorie deficit, why do they regain more than the amount that the, of calories they're eating um, says that they should? So this study looked at what a 10% and 20% weight loss did to metabolic rate and also what a 10% increase in body weight did to metabolic rate. Overeating and gaining 10% body weight revs up your metabolism, you burn more calories per day. And similarly, when you lose weight, 10 or 20% down, your metabolism slows down. Now, it's important to note that these figures are minus what you would expect. So if you lose fat mass or muscle mass, which you do when you lose weight, you would expect to have a slower metabolic rate because that tissue isn't burning calories anymore. This is a slowdown in metabolic rate over and above that amount. Specifically, uh, non-obese and obese people saw an increase of 368 and 534 calories per day on average, respectively. And for the weight loss group, um, non-obese and obese people saw a 218 and 244 decrease, respectively. And for the 20% reduction, uh, that was only done with obese people, and that was a 300 calorie reduction. This study saw similar declines in metabolic rate, but here's the good news. After a month of unlimited eating, their metabolic rates had returned to normal. So much for permanent adaptation. So let me tell you about my coaching client. She is 
She is not a large woman. She's about five foot two. And uh, she, uh, before I met her and started working with her, was 168 pounds. And on her own initiative, she decided that she was going to lose some weight because um, she had a, basically a gut and she wanted to get rid of it. So uh, she dropped down. Uh, she didn't know what she was eating calorically to begin with, but she dropped down to 1800 calories per day and she started running for about a half hour a day and she uh over the course of time lost some weight but then her weight loss plateaued and so she decided she was going to up the ante she dropped down to uh 1600 calories and was then running 45 minutes a day sounds good right but even a shorter period of time, she once again plateaued. And so she upped the ante again. And so she ended up eventually uh, over a course of number of these cycles, she ended up, uh, when I when I started working with her, she was down to eating 900 calories per day and running for an hour. Now that is a crappy place to be, let me tell you, because one, you're not meeting your basic nutritional needs. Uh, from like in terms of uh, vitamins and minerals, you, you almost can't on 900 calories a day unless you're taking a ton of supplements. Two, her libido had disappeared, which her husband wasn't really pleased with. Uh, three, she didn't really enjoy her physical activity anymore. She was very low energy all the time. It felt like a drag. And um, oh, and four, her hair had started to thin. So she had gotten to a really bad place. And when she contacted me, she was like, look, I am in this place where when I eat any more, I regain fat so quickly and I have fought so hard to get down to 142 pounds, 26 pounds of weight loss. And every time I eat a little more because I'm so hungry, I get fat and then I double down again and I go lose a few pounds. But it's like, I keep getting, it gets harder and harder to go back. And mentally she was in a bad place. She wasn't happy, but she had fought so hard for what she wanted. You have to feel for people like that because they have dieted themselves into a corner. And she wanted me to help her go on a raw food diet. And I told her, a raw food diet isn't gonna do anything for you. It might increase your satiation because uh, you'll be eating more volume of food, but it's not gonna change the underlying dynamic of what's happened here. And that is through these multiple cycles of weight loss, your metabolic rate has declined. If not with each one, then certainly at least, uh, you know, by going down to 900 calories and the exercise is an additional stress on your body. And the way forward, if you really want to maintain or, or she actually wanted to lose more weight, isn't gonna be through doubling down again. You can't double down when you're at 900 calories. You just can't. So uh, how then can we help somebody like this? Because this is a lot of people. There's two forms of idiocy in the vegan movement, as far as I can see. And one is the binge dieting, going continuously ratcheting down and starving yourself to such a degree without any periods of eating at a more weight maintenance level of calories. And two, there's the opposite, which says, oh, metabolic damage is the worst thing ever. We have to get you eating uh, you know, uh, you're a five foot two woman. Let's feed you 3,000, 4,000 calories a day. That'll that'll fix you right up. No, that'll make you fat. The laws of thermodynamics are not um, gonna just disappear. You're taking in that energy. It's gonna go somewhere. It's either gonna become mass, muscle mass, or fat mass, or you're gonna burn it off. And because your metabolic rate is so suppressed, you're most likely gonna add it as tissue. So ramping up calories that quickly is just not smart. Um, and uh, also, most vegan diets, uh, and keep in mind, I eat a vegan diet, so I'm not bad-mouthing them, but they're just too low in protein to really support muscle mass gains at an ideal rate. Um, and that muscle is healthy tissue, which you want to put on. So I told her what she didn't want to hear, and that is she was going to have to see the scale go up before it goes down, but we're not go we're going to do everything we can to minimize that. So what we did was I, I really upped her protein intake, and we slowly, over the course of um, 
uh, every week we added like one or 200 calories uh, to what she was eating. And after roughly two and a half months, uh, she, I believe, was up to 2,600 calories and her weight had stabilized at 156 pounds. But here's the thing. I had her doing strength training that whole time. I had set her up with a, a, a barbell coach and she was, and she, this was not an athlete. She had no idea. It was, it was very tentative, but I, I got her to do some strength training and she put on is, uh, and she was, this was a, a scale that, that reads body fat percentages. They're notoriously inaccurate, but it's all we had to go on roughly 10 pounds of muscle. So she, she went from 142 to 156 pounds and added 10 pounds of muscle. She lost, she added also a couple pounds of fat during that period, but she stabilized her weight at eating 2,600 calories up from 900 calories. And virtually everything about her life had gotten better. Her libido had returned. Her hair was, um, thickening her, um, she wasn't feeling like moody anymore. She was uh, engaged in her physical activity. She really liked it. And uh, life just seemed better in every non-scale way. The only thing that was bugging her was, you know, well, the scale says I went up. But she had to admit that the extra muscle on her body, she had been, she would have been really fearful. She didn't want to get bulky. That's most women tell me when I suggest that they do some strength training. I don't want to get bulky. I don't want to look like a, a, a you know, a, um, a bodybuilder. I don't want to look like that. And that's fine. But most people don't understand. You don't like women don't put on tons of muscle that quickly. Uh, Ten pounds of muscle is insane. But it only happens in beginners that aren't strength trained. So yeah, she put on 10 pounds of muscle and then she wanted to, she wanted to lose weight. And so what we did was we actually, uh, fluctuated between two week, uh, we did two week periods of strength training it, which when she ate at maintenance levels of calories when that was actually continuing to gain a little bit of muscle and a little bit of strength. And then we would do one week of running a calorie deficit and what happened, interestingly enough, was she was able to lose weight while eating 2,000 calories a day. So she she was, you know, enjoying her life more, and she was able to continue to function at a high level, eating a much greater volume of food that was meeting her nutritional needs, and she was feeling so much better. And eventually, the scale almost stopped mattering because she had gained enough muscle and lost enough fat where she was like, that's it. I'm done. And, um, so eventually I believe if I am remembering correctly, I got to look through my notes, what she eventually got down to, but I think that she ended up getting down to 145 pounds. Uh, and so she had less fat and more muscle and she was happy with her appearance and she was feeling great. So that is how you handle a situation in which you have backed yourself into a dietary corner. Yes, you need to take a break. Yes, you should see the scale go up because if nothing else, as you replenish carbohydrates, you're going to retain more water weight. Yes, you should not just keep eating a low protein diet. You should eat more protein so that the muscle you gain, because you're going to be strength training, right? You're not going to just be a cardio bunny that just dry, like, you know, is, is grinding yourself into the ground. You're going to build something and, um, uh, you're going to put on a little bit of muscle and it's not going to look bad because you're, you're not trying to be a, a bodybuilder. You're just trying to not look horribly scrawny because I've seen the before and after. She didn't look good with how much she had lost a lot of muscle during that initial weight loss period. Um, and that's how you do it. So, uh, this is something that I came at through looking at a couple studies, which I'll, we'll quickly talk about at the, at the end of this video. But, uh, I'm going to talk about, uh, in another video, a, uh, study that, uh, I think is going to change the way that people approach weight loss and is really, um, encouraging because I think that a lot of the binge dieting methodology that people 
excuse to, to gain weight is just stupid. It's just as stupid as the overfeeding ones. Um, so uh, let's, let's talk about those uh, studies really quick for uh, how I kind of got the idea that this might work. We've already talked about how significant decreases in calorie intake can lead to suppressed metabolic rate. We've also talked about how eating more, returning to a weight maintenance level of calories, seems to restore metabolic rate. But researchers have long observed that there's a difference between getting an overweight or obese person to run a calorie deficit and what that does to them, and if you get a fairly lean person to do the same thing. When non-overweight people diet, they and then they stop, they eventually gain back the weight plus some. But it's not just the same distribution of muscle and fat, it's actually more fat than muscle. Now, a lack of protein during this refeeding phase may be leading to the fat accumulation over lean tissue. So the traditional calorie deficit method of losing weight for lean people may actually backfire and make them fatter. But what if they don't take the traditional means of running a calorie deficit? Let me ask you a question. If the same person either ate 2,000 calories a day while burning 2,500 or ate 3,000 calories a day while burning 3,500, would they get the same result? The traditional answer is absolutely yes. They're running a 500 calorie a day deficit and they will lose roughly a pound a week. But about a decade of research has shown us that actually it probably won't work out that way. This study took older adults who already were doing aerobic exercise and had them do one of two things. One, keep doing what you're doing, or two, cut both your calories and your exercise by equal amounts. The group that cut their calories and their exercise had a slowdown in resting metabolic rate, and they also moved less when they weren't exercising. You might suspect that they would move more because they're resting more, but uh, it didn't work out that way because the lack of energy made them move less. The researchers suggest that, in fact, moving more and eating more both together may be the superior way to do it. And they say that taking overweight, obese Americans who have just not really exercised and trying to get them to, you know, overfeeding them and trying to get them to exercise is probably not going to be successful, but that you could probably slowly work them up to this. So what will the effects of this be across multiple years? This study took two groups, one college-age women between 18 and 20, and two adolescents around the age of 15. After three years, the only group that had not gained body fat and that actually lost body fat was the high energy flux group. In other words, the group that had eaten the most and exercised the most. They were eating 3,200 and burning off 2,800 calories per day. They dropped from around 18 to 15.9% body fat on average. The low flux group, in other words, those eating the least and exercising the least, gained the most body fat, and the group in the middle actually got results right in the middle. The crazy thing about this is that the high flux group were in an energy surplus at the beginning of the study, and the low flux group was in an energy deficit at the beginning of the study. So traditionally, you would expect the low flux group to be losing more weight, but that obviously didn't happen. But no, they're not violating the laws of thermodynamics. They just had a sped up metabolism when they were eating more calories. So when you've slowed down your metabolic rate by dieting too long and too hard, uh, and you can't up the ante anymore, upping your both exercise level and upping your intake of food might be a good answer. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, just know that if you have backed yourself into a corner, there is a way out. It's not going to be, you're probably not going to like the fact that the scale keeps going up. But if you do it intelligently, then you're going to come out the other end a better person, able to eat more calories while maintaining the weight that you want. Um, and you, you're not going to be able to be, you know, persistently running huge calorie deficits, but you can if you focus on performance being able to fuel yourself for performance uh, and not just cutting it to bare bones, you're gonna, you're gonna feel good doing it. So, see you later.